We got some repairs going today. Getting a vacuum on this tank. What we're gonna be doing is changing some sight glasses. And we are fighting the weather like you wouldn't believe. We've waited th three weeks to do this freaking job just to get here today and still be fighting the sneaking weather. Need to get that recovered down so we can get recovery going. We're gonna pull out of that valve there. We'll get the EEVs opened up and the drain and, and uh, feed valves. We've got my sub cooler. Oh, so we'll get this set up. All right, we are down to 1,100 microns. We'll let it hit a thousand and that'll be done. We'll switch tanks over. We'll come over here. We'll get all the valves, everything opened up on the panel. Uh, this sensor is reading uh, a little off, but our set point is 48 right now. So, system one is the one we're going to be working on. So, we'll go in here to system switches, cycle one down, and that'll put all the load on system two. I mean, they're only running, yeah, they're only running 50% speed, so. Circuit 2 should handle the load without any trouble. The charge, everything is fine on it. What we're going to be changing are that, that is that side glass and then that side glass there. That's what needs replaced. So we are uh, going to do that, get the cores changed out. We'll be good to go. We've got everything hooked up. We're going to purge this so we get liquid. So we gotta go through the recovery, through the subcooler. There's a lot of trap vapor in there to get to that point. So we're gonna go ahead, get the recovery machine on. Tank is open. The tar weight on these are 55. So 55 pounds. And it's got a water capacity of 121 pounds. We're gonna come over here next. We'll turn this on. That puts water to the subcooler. We're going to go into our service mode and open the valves up. So first thing we gotta do is we're gonna cycle the machine down. We're gonna go into service. I'm gonna put the coat in. Analog output, circuit one feed valve. We're gonna go 100% open. Go to the drain valve, 100% open. All right, so now that we've got the valves opened, uh, we're gonna go ahead and we'll put, we're unplugging them. What that's gonna do is it's gonna lock them in the open position They'll stay at 100% open for the recovery, for the vacuum. We can come out of service mode and that will uh, allow circuit two to come back online and do its thing while we're servicing circuit one. Uh, so just so you know, if you have to replace these, we ha we've had to replace that one before. You have to get the new head module and the plug adapter, the harness adapter. So these new ones uh, have a different plug than the uh, traditional uh, wiring setup that the original ones had. Those original ones don't have a removable plug. All that's built into the uh, to the valve. So, you, but you have to specifically order that extra when you order new valves. They don't make them like that anymore. You're gonna buy them like that. But again, you have to get that extra plug adapter whenever you do so it'll wire directly back into the factory harness now that that is done we're going to go back here i'm going to confirm system one is off system two is on we'll kick it back on that'll let circuit two start back up it'll catch building load and um, we'll be able to finish the recovery this circuit is is very very low 
I don't even think it's got 50% of its charge in it. We're going to have to get a lot in it. It's a 230 pound circuit total. So, and this vacuum should be done. Yep, it's finished. Okay. We can close this off. Kill that. Turn that off. Good to go there. So normally, we can pull out of that valve and, and we get a pretty high volume right out the gate. Not really seeing that the way I wanted to. We may end up hooking up here to the liquid line and trying it this way instead. The, the trouble is you still have a lot of trapped liquid. That's one thing that sucks about the recovery on these is there's not a true low point to recover from where you can really capture it all. You still end up boiling quite a bit of liquid out. But we may be better off hooking up here and just trying to do it from here instead. So let's just let's just give it a try. We're not that far into it. And close this suction valve. That way all we have to do is just bleed to there. And we'll move the hose from here to here. So we've got a 3 8 con uh, connection there through a 3 8 hose into a quarter port here and then run the rest of the way. I'll explain this subcooler set up here in a second once we get everything rolling. I want to talk about a really cool app that I saw this past week actually. Uh, HVAC School released a video uh, discussing, you know, doing recovery and things and they talked about their app. I didn't know this app existed honestly. I hadn't ran into it before. But they've got a really awesome feature that I want to just kind of display here. Really, really support this this app. They've, they're doing a lot of great things. Uh, you, you know, especially for people fresh out of school, beginner, trying to figure things out like this under low capacitor test. And I just love what I'm seeing in here. Regardless, recovery fill tank. So our tar weight on our tank is 55 pounds. It's 121 uh, water capacity WC and we're dealing with our 134a refrigerant spit that out so they did the calculation for us and the conversion so we can do 159 pounds of total weight or 104 pounds of actual fill weight on the tank it's really sad just how little refrigerants in this system so at both of our recovery points we started off with just, there's not enough liquid in this thing to, to do much of anything. Um, it just, it's, it's just sad to see just how much charge they lost before we were able to catch it. Anyway, so you'll see there's a dew line right here. That is where the liquid level is on this particular side of the circuit. And then we can come over here to the flash tank and you can see this is where the liquid level is on the flash tank. So we've got to recover all of that down. The reality of what that means is there's that's not much refrigerant for this system. Um, so we're recovering this. So basically 160 pounds rounded based off of the app. And so I'm, I'm really sad to see that uh, we're just basically this whole thing's going to be a straight vapor recovery is what it is let's talk about our subcooler setup here we're coming off of our liquid line 3 8 line into the recovery machine back out into the subcooler out of the subcooler into the recovery tank and then i got a water hose hooked up processing through the other circuit of the subcooler and back out there to drain on the rest of the roof. The reason for this is to keep the tank temperature and head pressure down on the machine. So the lower the compression ratio, the greater volume we're able to move. And I made this myself, so this is not something you can just go buy. They sell uh, submergible subcoolers that just sit in the bottom of a bucket but uh, I found that this is a lot more efficient and, and a lot more effective so I just I really prefer my own personal design over what you can buy in the store 
anyway with this sub cooler I've been able to do 200 pounds of 134 refrigerant in just a couple hours right that was now granted on that system I had a actual re liquid refrigerant recovery point this one I don't sadly at York that would be really appreciated if we had regardless if I didn't have that sub cooler trying to do that that same recovery would normally take me most of the day and it's just because I got the head pressure to stay down compression ratio is down which means flow volume is up that's it's as simple as that the more you can keep your ratio down the higher your volume is going to be on this display you'll see our pressure has dropped to 43 pounds and that seems good and all but that's not actually dropped that that much because of the recovery that's dropped that much because you see our saturation is 49 right now on uh, both high and low side 48 there well if we go look at our leaving water temp we're also at 48 our pressure has dropped because our temperature has dropped on the water we're not going to start dropping pressure because of recovery until all that liquid has been recovered out so we've got to get that liquid out first before that pressure is going to start changing or doing any kind of difference for us that's one of the things i really like about these g5 twins is that they are actually designed to pump liquid refrigerant but the caveat that gets a lot of people in trouble is you cannot have any restrictions in the discharge side of that system so for example you cannot have any core depressors you can't you go through any schraders on the discharge side so those hoses are full port there's no core depressors or anything in them there's nothing there to restrict it also that's why it's important to keep the tank pressure down because the tank pressure will build enough back pressure on the on the discharge line of the pump that it'll act like a restriction basically and so when that pump starts to shutter that is because you're you don't have enough flow on your liquid side had a technician the other day was trying to do a recovery with the uni weld hoses and the ball valves on those hoses were significantly smaller than the quarter inch well, it was enough to where he couldn't use them to move straight liquid with the pump. He had to throttle the suction valve. Like I said, when we do the, the charging later, that's how we're going to do it. We're going to go straight liquid into the pump, into the into the liquid line of the machine. And it's, it's not going to give us any trouble. And that this 230 pounds worth of charge is going to take, you know, less than an hour, maybe hour and a half. Uh, to, to put into the system recovery's finished we're going to uh, start doing the repairs now we, we got a hundred pounds out out of a 225 uh, they've approved replacing what they lost we're going to need to get so we, we brought one can just in case we're going to need three more to get that other uh, the rest of that charge so uh, right now we're going to do the repair do a pressure test get vacuum going when we get to the point of pulling vacuum we'll break for lunch while we're out at lunch we will get the um get the extra refrigerant then we'll come back hopefully the vacuum will be close to finishing by then we'll do the charge that'll take an hour hour and a half start up have everything completely finished today okay i'm gonna need this bad boy Get the camera tripod. We're gonna need the big boy here. Put those there. This, my love. This. Any more from him?
getting the filter dryer replaced i've already got the side glasses changed out we got the new core sitting in there he's about to put a new seal on that cap we'll get that back on we'll do our pressure test get some nitrogen on the system make sure it holds uh it does what we want we'll start vacuum and we'll break all right so we got nitrogen pressure on the system we're doing the first phase of the test at 30 psi we're going to make sure that holds first we're going to give that a little bit if we hold 30 then we'll switch over we'll put another tank in that should get us up around 50 60 pounds and we'll let that sit for the longest if we hold that steady without any trouble then uh we're gonna call that a good test and we'll switch over and start our uh, vacuum from there so we've pre passed pressure test we've had it holding for over half an hour at 59 psi not budged at all so we're gonna call that good we're gonna go ahead and get a uh, vacuum going so we got a test 8 We'll get a magna flow set up. Uh, we got our 3 8 hoses. We're, we got half inch hoses, 3 8 connections, yada yada. Anyway, we'll get in here. We'll pull off of that service port. We'll pull off of this liquid port. Get two hoses going and let this baby rock, rock and roll. All right, so we got our vacuum going. That big half inch hose there. Another half inch hose coming off the liquid into the Tez 8 we are starting to pull down we're just waiting on the so this micro gauge caps out at 25,000 so I'm just waiting on that to come down we just turned it on just as soon as I started this video so it's gonna take in a minute and uh, once it's confirmed we'll carry down everything we can and uh, we'll go grab lunch and come back and hopefully it'll be wrapping up well, I'm back from lunch, and we're doing really, really well on the Microns. We're already at 680. I'm waiting on my coworker to get back, Eric. So he went to go pick up the extra refrigerant. I wanted to come up here and check on this, see how we're standing. So I'm really, really strict on my Microns and, and vacuums. And so I, I'm not gonna stop this until we get well below 500. And so ideally, I really prefer to get into the three and four hundreds at minimum. And once I achieve that, I'd really try to not let the system within a, a decay period of 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the system. We'll probably let this one decay closer to an hour. But uh, I don't want to see that go back above 500 is what I try to, to keep it at. Like I said, it's, it's a little overkill most of the time. I know manufacturer specs don't even have it that tight they usually say like you know get get down to 500 and then don't let it go above a thousand so i get that but i don't know i'm just I'm a little bit of a perfectionist in a lot of ways and uh yeah it's just one of my little pet peeves i guess i deal with regardless i do have my micron gauge coming off the suction line there so i just got it on a test valve what we'll do is for decay test is We'll just close these Appion valves and then that'll isolate the Tez 8. I just, I don't know, I, I just, I, I've used the Tez 8 for a number of years now and I just, I cannot say enough good things about it. I've had so little issues out of them. You know, you just, they're, they're amazing, amazing vacuum pumps. I hear great stuff about the fill piece. I know uh, HVACR videos, he talks real big about the fill piece setup. Uh, I would love to try it out one day. Uh, I don't know that it's ever going to be something I invest in myself, but um, you know, j just because I've had such good results with the Appion, uh, I know that the Navic also has a good setup. I know AKH Vac is he, you know, he a big rep for them now. So I, I really support anything he's behind for sure. But. Uh, you know, anyway, I'm not saying there aren't other good brands and stuff out there, but that Tez 8, Appion, Appion made a good product and they made Tez 8. Same thing with the G5 Twin. They're just both of those pumps are excellent products. Tech gets here and uh, one of the 
refrigerant cylinders that he was given at the supply house was actually missing the wrapper or the seal and uh, the the cap is not quite on there just right now th thankfully everything weighs perfectly so these these are 30 pound cylinders the, the roughly five pounds of uh, tar weight on the on the can so it's all okay but just a word of advice always verify that that wrapper is there and if it's not either check it with that at the supply house or just ask for a different can i mean it's okay if it weighs good like this i'm not too worried about it but you know you don't you never know just sometimes people do weird stuff and you don't want to be the victim of whatever somebody else is jacking around with so we're not we're trying to drop below 600 now i'm just going to go ahead i want to speed this up a little bit and uh, we're gonna put some fresh oil for that last just little, little bitty bit. We gotta pull, so both valves are closed. We're gonna shut down and do the change. That's yummy. Oh yeah, baby. That oil pulled down to 600 and, or 600 microns. If that's not impressive, uh, just t just uh, having another pump that can perform like that, that's just crazy, man. You wouldn't think, I mean, just that, that nasty pull that deep. Gone. We'll give it a minute to catch up. Open up. Open it up. Now we'll give that micron gauge a little bit. Let it zip back down. Do its thing. We had our decay test. I, I decided to give in a little bit. We got to 580. It didn't increase past 700. So. We're going to take it. We're running out of daylight. We still got, you know, 220 pounds of refrigerant to move. So we got everything shut down, isolated. We're going to pull this vacuum hose here off and we'll get a charge hose hooked up, get the recovery machine hooked up and uh, get this pumpy pumping up. I did it. Go ahead and flip it. We'll purge through the liquid. Okay. Open this. Bam. Purged. Open. Put that down. Okay, so this recovery is going to go, or this charge will go a lot faster this way um, and we'll pump all 225 pounds in this way so we'll pump we'll put everything we've got into the liquid line let the system do what it wants to with it from there we do still have the valves open so we've not let those close yet they're still unhooked from the system so uh, yeah no we're doing good and this is what I'm talking about. So you're doing straight liquid refrigerant right now. And this pump's just purring away. No issues at all. And uh, that's because we don't have any any restrictions, any core depressors, nothing in these hoses at all. Which is, which is what you want if you're going to do it this way. So we'll do the entire charge like this. Once we hit the weight we're looking for, I mean, it'll be everything we got on the roof. It'll take all four cans of 134. And then we'll have to finish off that recovery cylinder as well. So we've already put in eight pounds and we're still rocking and rolling. So recover or charging is done. It took we started at 3:30. It's 4:30 now. We were able to do all 220 pounds in right at an hour on the dot. So 
again that's just why i love that procedure it just it's it's it works it does a great job it's fast these pumps are amazing so one of the the notes i want to make about these particular tanks is the ones we get the the uh the pickup tube for the liquid line doesn't actually go all the way to the bottom it stops just a couple of inches short so what will happen is you'll be pulling down pulling down you think you got all the liquid out in reality you didn't you, it, those last couple of inches of liquid you have to boil out of the tank so it takes a, a few extra minutes to do that but I mean it, it, it's just, just something to be aware of you, you'll think you got it all out and then you realize later that you didn't and so just don't let that trip you up so anyway we're packing up we uh we need to hook up the valves and we will do a calibration on them and then we will get circuit one turned on start it up and uh get a full load on it check the charge make sure everything looks good and we'll be ready to rock and roll all right remember where to go So you're looking for, those are, those are AIs, right? You see that? We're looking for the analog outputs, the AOs. So cycle to the left or right. Right there. System one. So that, that zero is not an accurate reading. That's where it thinks it is. You need to manually calibrate it. So go to 100%. Enter. Okay. Now go ahead and you can... Well, you can hear it doing its thing, right? We can verify it's closed at the end. So go ahead and cycle down and do the same thing to the drain valve. Okay. All right, you can hear that valve too. So let that one finish. While that one's going, cycle back to the, and then go zero. Open or closed? Yeah, open or closed. Nice. Okay, so now what do we do next? Let's go ahead and lock out circuit two. Yep. We've done our valve test. We know we got charged in it. Let's go ahead and start it up. So how do you do that? We're going to go to service. No. Nope. We're system switches. There you go. We're going to turn off system two. Okay, system two is locked out. Go to status. Down, so our switch is off. So we lock down circuit two, switches off. Power on. Mm -hmm. Watch for circuit one. To so that's it. So from here, we'll let circuit one start up, and uh, we'll do a run run check on it, make sure everything looks good. And that's a wrap. So uh, system's running absolutely beautiful. We're at a full full load and. Liquid levels look good, super heat's doing great. It's still getting under control a little bit, but we're also doing a pull down. I let the loop heat up a little bit. So, anyway, I'm gonna move this set point back to 48 and uh, let this puppy purr. We'll uh, re enable system two. And this repair is done. So, we'll finish packing up. Hope y'all enjoyed it. This is a good one. Uh, wasn't too complicated. Just a matter of procedure, process, going through it, doing it to it. I mean, it just it's just like anything else, you know. It just step by step. You do it. You get it done. You call it a good day and go home. <laughs>